So, I mean, I'm going to try and be as long-winded as possible uh, without talking too fast. So um, let's start. Let's start at the beginning. My uh, my professional experience before becoming a community manager was a very solid foundation in customer service. So I spent my first entry level job. I was working for a bank. I was working in a call center for a bank. So these were during the days when. Uh, internet banking was was a thing, but folks were still calling up the 800 number to ask, uh, hey, what's what's my balance? What checks cleared? Things like that. And uh, that was when I, I started getting my first professional experience. From there, I went on to work for a company called Iron Mountain. Uh, they are a records manage information management company. So they deal with uh, securely storing and destroying records for companies that have to maintain records for a certain period of time due to compliance reasons, right? So when you think about hospitals, law offices, um, companies like this that, you know, have to keep records for a certain amount of time, uh, will store those records. And then when it comes time that they're no longer required to be stored, will safely destroy them as well. Um, so it went from customer service in a call center for a bank to working in an environment. This was a unique customer service role for me because it was one that uh, was sort of a hybrid customer service role and a uh, transportation management role. I was working out of one of the transportation hubs, making sure that you know, the drivers were getting to all of their stops, going to different businesses to either pick up records or uh, actually going with trucks that had shredders built into the truck itself and destroying um, paper uh, on site for, for our customers. So it was a little bit of customer service, a little bit of dispatching and transportation management, and uh, a little bit of junior account management as well, right? So whenever there was a, an account that was at risk or, or needed some, some high level uh, care, some white glove service, if you will, uh, my team, well, myself would be the one to you know engage with that customer. And that's where I really feel like, I wanna say that I did customer service work for maybe about five to, eight years or so um, before becoming a community manager. And during this time is when I, I feel like I, I really began to develop the soft skills that helped me to be successful as a community manager. So to Blake's earlier point, um, you know, thinking about the skill sets that you might need to become a community manager or for anyone who's considering uh, making a pivot into community management or if you're just getting started out, um, being able to listen to people is a huge, a huge soft skill that uh, will take you a, a very long way as a community manager, because when you take the time to actively listen to people and re be able to recall things that they share with you, people feel seen, they feel, and they feel like there's someone out there who, who understands them. Um, and that adds to this sense of belonging that we keep talking about, um, this void that that needs to be filled and, and that is being filled by community managers doing the great work that you're doing, right? So that does it for customer service, uh, the foundation of, of my career, right? Uh, from there, I transitioned. I was I was just finishing up college and I, uh, I got an internship working for a company. At the time, they were called Tudor, the number two, T-O-R, but now they're just called 2U, the number two and the letter U. So they're an education company that partners with, um, with some of the top tier universities here in the United States to deliver their master's degree programs online. So this was around, I think they were founded around 2008. I joined them in 2011 and I joined them as an intern. Uh, so I was in my last semester of, of my, uh, my bachelor's, you know, four years uh, in college. And uh, I started as an intern and kind of doing a little bit of everything, doing uh, some PR work, 
doing a little bit of HTML coding um, on a WordPress site, uh, working with SEO managers, um, doing some social media management kind of work, and uh, doing a lot of things that were very marketing related. Uh, so uh, I was able to successfully parlay and transition that role from an intern to a full-time position, and I joined the company as uh, a social media community manager. So uh, being that this company partnered with some of the top tier universities in the uh, in the country to deliver their master's degree programs online, I was the community manager for the Masters of Arts in Teaching at USC. And the reason that I use air quotes around that is because although we would refer to each other, myself and my teammates would refer to each other as community managers uh, within in, in the office, uh, my official title was inbound marketing coordinator. And what that means is that I spend the majority of my time uh, actually sending cold emails to people who were either either had blogs or were thought to be uh, thought leaders or influencers in the education space uh, to see if I could guest post on their blogs. Uh, so I would pitch them an idea. Uh, if they gave me the thumbs up, I would you know work and it wouldn't actually be me doing the writing. I would work with freelance uh, writers to uh, produce a blog that you know would get published on their blog. And then I would also simultaneously work with SEO managers to make sure that we were hitting certain keywords and phrases uh, from an SEO perspective uh, to increase you know the visibility of that that blog. So the name of the game for me was really organic link building. So I would work to develop these blogs. I would also work with freelance graphic designers to create infographics about topics around surrounding education. Um, so it was interesting that we would call each other community managers because the, when it came to the actual community management work, it was really about staying in touch with students who had attended the program for the Masters of Arts in Teaching at USC, or uh, keeping in touch with folks who were interested in joining the program and making sure that they got connected to an admissions counselor. So it was kind of like keeping them in the funnel. Um, so very, very uh, marketing focused kind of role. And the reason that I bring this up, a lot of us know that depending on the organization that you're working for as a community manager, you could be reporting up into marketing or you could be reporting up into customer success or in some of the, the rare cases of companies who have a very sophisticated uh, mindset when it comes to community management. Uh, some, some companies have community as its own department or maybe even have a chief community officer, right? So um, the reason why I, I emphasize this is because uh, there is definitely a connection between uh, marketing and and community. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think there was the, I, I noticed a colleague of mine, David DeWald, contributed to uh, this organization called Guild. They put out a a, a playbook that's all about uh, what's called community based marketing. Uh, so. There's definitely a relationship between the two, but it's important for us to understand where the line is between marketing and community because community is still something that needs that we need to maintain as, as being organic and um, something that you know can't be bought. Our, our relationships that we build with our community members is uh, something that comes there's there's a personal there's a, a level of, of personal uh ness to it you know that's why you have the heart in the in the middle of, of community building because there's you know they say business is not personal but when it comes to community stuff it does get personal to blake's point earlier you know you have community members that you see them go through different you know key moments in their life life events like getting married or having children so there does the line does get blurred between um, between you know personal and business. So we need to remember that, and we need to know that 
uh, you know, you can be in a marketing based role while still maintaining your sense of humanity. So that is my first job in community management. From there, I kind of still was in the, the trajectory of marketing. I moved on to uh, work as a, as a social media coordinator for a snack food subscription service called Grays. This was a company that started in the UK and uh, and they uh, they have a, a service that allows it kind of works similar to Netflix. You create an account, you select uh, what kinds of foods or snacks that you like based on whatever your food preferences are. And they have an algorithm that curates a box of snacks for you and sends it to you in the mail. So they started in the UK. They were trying to build their presence in the US market. And I joined them as sort of just a, a one man team who was making sure that they maintained the consistent uh, presence on all of their social media channels. So this was, you know, strictly social media management, not a whole lot of community component to this to this role, although I would have some interaction with their customer base in terms of us from a support perspective. So uh, anything that I found out about uh, what our customers were saying that could help inform the social media strategy, I would definitely leverage that. Um, so it was really just me taking photos, taking videos and posting on Instagram and Facebook and all of that good stuff. Um, I did that for about a year. And um, at during this time, I'm also gonna I'm also gonna weave in another component to this story so that it's not just about my professional career, but I also to emphasize how how community is also a part of our lives personally. Uh, during this time, I, uh, before, you know, I knew that community management was something that I could do for a living. Um, you know, community is, is a part of our personal lives, whether, whether you're working in it professionally or not, we all gravitate towards community as humans. Right, so you so you are part of a community whether you know it or not, um, based on whatever it is that you like to do in your own spare time. For me, I love going to concerts. I listen to a lot of music, and I watch a lot of movies, um, and I love going to the movies and going to concerts. So, uh, and Blake also mentioned this earlier since he was giving me so many shout outs. Uh, he mentioned, uh, oh, yeah, it might be a, a, a group, a community that gets together to talk Deftones music. Well, Deftones is one of my favorite bands. Another one of my favorite bands is a band called Incubus. And personally, around 2014, I became aware of Facebook groups. And I noticed that there were Facebook groups for uh, the bands that I love the most, Incubus and Deftones. So I joined all these groups and I'm like, OK, great. I'm going to get to keep up to date with all of the information for the bands that I really love. Um, and I became friends with a lot of the fans in these groups and they were located in all different parts of the world and all different parts of the United States. So around 2014, I actually ended up in a long distance relationship with someone who was a, a big Deftones fan like me. Right. So at this time, I'm, you know, working for that company, Grays, and uh, I'm also looking for work in Texas. I'm originally from the New York, New Jersey area. Right now I'm living in Florida, but I spent a few years living in Texas because I was in this long distance relationship. I was part of a fan community that was all about Deftones music, and is it this bled into my professional career because I started to look for work outside of where I was living at the time. I noticed that uh, Austin, Texas had a very good thriving tech scene. And, um, and I ultimately ended up moving. Um, so what started with a long distance relationship ended up turning into a good career opportunity for me. Um, and uh, and yeah, so the personal part of community and the professional part of community came together. Um, during this time that I was looking for work in Texas, I, I then joined Sirius XM. I was still living in New York. I spent a couple of years working for them as a social media coordinator. This role was a little bit more community focused in that uh, I was still 
addressing our customers from a support perspective, but I would also capture the voice of the community and give that information to uh, the editorial teams who are dealing with all of our outbound social media content. So the voice of the community would influence their, their publishing decisions when we, whenever we would meet with them. So I did that for a couple of years, and then I found uh, a company called Coros. At the time, they were spread fast. Um, and I joined them as a, uh, as also as a social media coordinator, but, you know, we, again, similar to that first role that I mentioned, we refer to each other as community managers, um, in the office. So I made the move. I left, I left, uh, New Jersey where I was living at the time. I moved to Texas and I started working for spread fast. It was then that. Again, I'll go back to my original point about marketing, about community management, um, and about how there's there's interconnectivity between roles. Uh, this position that I started with Spreadfast, who is now called Coros, uh, they merged with a company called Lithium, which is one of the biggest uh, community platform softwares on the market. So they're now called Coros, and uh, I was a community manager, but I was managing communities that lived on social media platforms. Now, there's definitely a big difference between doing community management in the B2B world and doing community management for communities that live on, on social media channels. Um, and again, I think there's there may have been a point, I think we're past this now, but I think there may have been a point where the two kind of like competed with each other where there was like this sense of, oh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a community manager, but I'm managing a Facebook group or a LinkedIn group, or I have a community, but it's on Instagram or WhatsApp, you know, and then community management on the B2B side is like, you know, oh, that's, you know, that's great that you're doing this stuff, but we've got this other thing going on and, you know, doing community management in a B2B sense, it gives you there's a little bit more autonomy because you're not subject to the whims of the platform. You're kind of, you get to select what platform you want to use and you get, you get a little bit more of an administrative control in terms of how things work. But it's just interesting to see that, to see community management through so many different lenses at different points in my career. Um, so yeah, I was in, I was in Austin, Texas, working for Coros for about three years. During that time, I became affiliated with CMX as a uh, as a CMX Connect chapter host, and that was a very organic process. I've always been the kind of person who uh, has been very keen on networking and find seeking out the experience of others to inform my own career decisions and learn. I'm, I always consider myself to be uh constantly curious and a, and a lifelong learner so when i got to texas as a new guy in town that was one of the first things that i thought of i said hey you know i want to i want to you know find out what events are going on in the area and see if i can find some people who are working in the community industry that i can learn from and i found that there was a an austin texas chapter of cmx connect and it happened very very organically i went from attending one event I guess I must have had some thoughtful things to share at that one event, uh, because at the end of the event, the young lady who was the host at the time, her name is Courtney Howell, by the way. If you if you ever find her on LinkedIn, she's uh, a very a very smart individual and someone that you can learn from as well. Uh, she approached me after the event and said, "Hey Jeff, you know, I loved what you had to share." would you like to be a speaker at one of our next events? And I said, wow, I've never been a speaker at anything before. So, but it seemed like a good opportunity for me. So I said, okay, sure, I'll go ahead and do that. While we were working together to get my information, my headshot and stuff on the event page, you know, she had mentioned that, that they hadn't secured a venue for their event and that, um, and that you know perhaps we could have the event at the off at the Coral's offices in Austin, and I said, well, I'll, I'll look into it, but I'll I'll have to get back to you and let you know. So I I was able to uh, 
to to have the event at the office there. I was and I was a panel for the I was a panelist on on uh, for the event, um, and it went very well. It went very well. And then following that event, uh, Courtney had to bow out of the her her role as the host for for her own reasons. And, uh, and I was contacted by Beth McIntyre to uh, take over the hosting responsibilities for the Austin, Texas chapter. So, you know, after finding out all of the, all of the details and things that would be involved in doing that, I, uh, I became the new host and I did hosting in Austin, Texas for about two years. Um, and I moved to Florida. I'm now in St. Petersburg, Florida in the Tampa Bay area uh, at the end of 2020. And, uh, and I recently started a new chapter here because it was such a rewarding experience getting to, uh, getting to know p other people in the industry and getting the experience uh, with event planning, which I hadn't done previously. Um, it was a very rewarding experience to get to grow my network in that way, to get to know all of the beautiful people like Blake and everyone that's here today. Uh, all of this has happened because, you know, I just took a chance and went out and followed my, you know, follow what my heart was telling me to go to an event. And then it went from attendee, speaker, and now host. So I've been doing it here uh, for a few months now. We actually have our third event tomorrow. So that'll be great. And um and yeah, that kind of that kind of brings me to present day. Uh, after I left Texas, I I was working with Corals for a little while. After I moved to Florida, uh, I then joined a company called Bright Cove at uh, in August of last year, and I worked with them for about a year, helping them to build and launch their first customer community. So this was actually the first transition from working as a social media community manager to actually doing B2B community management, which is really where I wanted to be. Um, and I parted ways with Bright Cove a few months ago, I want to say at the beginning of July. Um, and I just started working with a new company doing B2B community building called uh, Decision Link. So uh, yeah, that's what I've been up to for the past month and a half. Um, and that is, in a nutshell, the story of my career. So with that, I, I hope that, you know, I was able to touch on some of the things that, that Blake started us off with. Um, and if there's any questions based on, on what I've shared about myself with you, I'm, I'm happy to answer anything. Oh, I see we have one and, and Alejandro coming back. Okay, uh, we have Alex in, in Manizales. Okay, we have Mauricio. Hi, Mauricio. Do you have some question to Jeffrey? Tienes alguna pregunta para Jeffrey? Uh, we, we can't hear you, Mauricio. We can't. Mm -hmm. No, le, no te escuchamos, Mauricio. No te escuchamos. Jeffrey, can you hear Mauricio or not? No. Can you? Um, I don't. I don't think so. And can you hear me, Felipe? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, just give us a second and let's see what happens. Okay. Mauricio, eh, yo creo que vuelve a salir y a entrar si quieres para ver si se soluciona el tema y mientras eso yo voy conversando con Jeffrey. Jeffrey, while we reconnect the connection from Manizales, so I have a question for you. And, yeah. And first, thank you for your presentation. So you have a great experience on customer success. So I, my question is, is, is how important is for you data? Are you a data-driven community? So this is, this is what I'm trying to do with my community now. So we are 300 members, and I'm trying to, to get to know each of the members of the community what they like, what they don't like. And I'm trying to build all of this information in a platform, which is HubSpot. But to me, it's like a mid-term or long-term strategy because uh, the more I know my community, the more I know my members, the more I can add value to them. So I would like to know what is your approach uh, to data uh, in your community uh, oriented to customer success? 
Yeah. Yeah. So there's a couple of points that I'd like to make on that. Um, you know, in terms of data, you, you definitely have to be data driven as a community manager. Um, but this is where you have to flex a little bit of creativity. I think when, when people hear data, they think numbers, they think science, they think that, you know, this is going to be depending on I, I'm a person who I'm, I'm, I'm not very big on math and science. Like I, I, I can, I can do it because I'm smart, but I, I gravitate more towards the creative and language arts type of that side of the brain. Um, so you definitely have to be data driven as a community manager to your point, what you're trying to do with your community and HubSpot. I'm also trying to do something similar with my community and create a bridge between HubSpot and the community so we can uh, sort of drill down and identify what you would call community qualified leads uh, to help our sales team out. But um, that all of that really depends on the the uh, the platform that you're working with. So I, I probably would counter to, to ask, you know, what community platform are you using that you're trying to connect with HubSpot? Does it have the ability to integrate with HubSpot? Um, and how degree can it really integrate? Like, is it just pulling basic information like first name, last name, or is it able to actually connect and say, hey, um, you know, this person who's a community member, HubSpot also knows that this is a customer or this is not a customer. Um, so that, that's the one technical part of it that you have to think about. The other thing that I would say as well is that just because data is um, so numbers driven, like don't think that you can't get creative with it too, because this is where you have the opportunity to become a storyteller, right? So you have to take a look at, at the number side of it. So what, what are all the, the, the vanity metrics that we're pulling in to, to begin telling the story about our community, but also take a good look at the qualitative data as well. What are your community members actually saying in the community? How do they feel about your brand? And if you're not actually getting any of this from interactions that are taking place in the community, schedule a call and talk to your community members, like get to know them, have, get some feedback from them, whether it's in the form of a survey and they're giving you qualitative information um, or you're just scheduling a call on them. I'm a little bit more partial to actually, you know, having that FaceTime with my community members and getting some some one-on-one -on -one interaction with them so I can get to know them. Um, that's That's the kind of, data that you're going to need to supplement the numbers and tell a real compelling story about your community. Perfect. Thank you very much, Jeffrey. And of course, I like the t-shirt. <laughs> community builder. Thank you. It. Thank oh. you. It's a, it's a CMX shirt. So. Oh, OK. I haven't seen it before. <laughs> uh, let us check if someone in Manizales, uh, they solve the, the issues or, or not? There we go. Um, <clears throat> I think that they are starting Day conference. Okay, so we have okay. to move on the agenda, Jeffrey, but thank you once again for being with us. Thank you for sharing all your experience and your knowledge with us. And best wishes thank for you. your projects. Thank you very yes, much. Thank, thank you, much. Jeffrey. I come to Colombia. I come to Medellin. Yes. <laughs> okay. See bye. you, my friend. Thank you. Bye.